night, everybody. Sorry if I look tired. I just woke up like 10 minutes ago. I It's like 6 a.m. I'm actually late. I was supposed to pick up Gordy at 5, and I slept through my alarm, and I think I was in silent mode. Well, we're hanging out, sitting around. It's an early one, but no sign of my fallen partner. Where the hell is he? Guy tells me to be ready, and here we are. Sitting and waiting. Vlogging 101, show up on time. Where you at, little buddy? I texted Corey, I was like, I'm so sorry I'm late. And he said, I've noticed people who are late are usually jollier than people who have been waiting for them. <laughs> so, <laughs> hope he's not too mad at me. I'm like an hour and a half late to his house. Um, it's gonna be like 13 hour drive, so. <laughs> Hopefully we make up quick. Anyways, like I was saying, I, uh, haven't done like any actual logging you know I'm as an arborist I've done just residential stuff but I really wanted to sort of check it out so Gordy has a friend named Anton he goes by hot saw on Instagram he's in Montesano California so just north of San Francisco so I think it's like a 13 plus hour drive so we're gonna go down there I'm gonna go check out some logging I'm hope I'm really hoping to that I think we're doing some like redwood logging which would be really really cool the vast majority of the work I have done is as a climber not felling trees I really sort of struggle with big saw and the big wood um, you know just felling stuff so I'm always much more comfortable just climbing and taking the tree down in small pieces that's just the vast majority of the sort of work that I've done as an arborist so I'm really excited this is my first time actually getting to see what the, the logging world is like there you know it's a, it's a different industry Gordy insisted on a cooler he just needs his refreshments but I'm glad I've got it I've got it all loaded up with all the food that I need See, that's important to have your nutrients and your hydration, so that's all the food that I've got for the trip. Big thanks to Bang for sponsoring this trip, you know. <laughs> They're sponsoring me, they just, they just don't know it yet. But anyways, let's go get Gordy, and yeah, let's get down to California. We've got a lot of driving ahead of us. Just a little bit. Oh man. Oh man, I'm sorry. We'll be alright. <laughs> alright, here we are at Gordy's house loading up the Jetta. While we're down there, I'm gonna be testing out and reviewing this 592, which is exciting. So yeah, just kind of squeeze everything into the Jetta. He wasn't upset that I was late. <laughs> he was he was happy about it. <laughs> and, happy you showed up. Yeah, happy I showed up. <laughs> Gordy insisted on that you couldn't live without the cooler, so. We've got the cooler. Let's yeah, get this all loaded up. All right, load it up. A lot of room in this in this bad boy. This diesel rig of mine. This car is so sweet. I got the so I think we got a handful of saws in there. We've got a grinder. We got a bunch of stuff. Got Gordy's cooler. He can't live without. Ready to rock and roll. Are you driving you ready? You I'll drive later. Not later. <laughs> oh, oh, dude! <laughs> Come on. Hard hat. These logger types are just so rough on your rigs, you know? Lucky I didn't strap just to the roof. <laughs> <laughs> All right, rolling through Washington. Gordy decided that I shouldn't drive because we were so late. We we're trying to make time, so. I think, uh, it feels kind of fast. <laughs> Hopefully these baloney skins hold up. <laughs> Just making a quick stop here. Jeff Schroeder, if you remember, he he hung that axe for me a while back when I was visiting August Henneke, and he's doing a little tips and tricks video for Gordy right now. So pretty fun to be back here. That's nice. Most of us all got grinders. So. Yeah, a lot of the old timers.
right, we're in Northern California. We're just driving through the Redwood Forest. We've still got like seven and a half hours until we get to Montesano. We just pulled over like, these are just along the side of the road. Look at these things. I've seen these trees a bunch of times. They never cease to amaze me. Saying we're headed to Montesano, and I found out yesterday it's actually Mendocino <laughs> is where we're going. Mendocino. Just so happens there's a town called Montesano three hours past it that we've been driving towards. So can't see it now. Yeah, we're just driving through the redwoods here. This is nice. Gordy's really enjoying driving me around. Love it. Yeah, he <laughs> loves it. This is amazing. Now we're in traffic. Yeah, headed down to Mendocino. Still, if you got four and a half hours away, just driving through these redwoods. pulled off just to check this just saw this big tree just flew my drone up to measure it just random tree on the side of the road 340 feet tall actually got to the top of it and panned around it's actually like one of the tallest trees in this area look at look at that thing it's just massive 340 feet tall just a monster absolute monster You're back in your day. already made it down here we're here seeing Anton Anton owns a logging outfit so this is Mendocino it's an old logging town apparently like a hundred years ago this area right here used to be a big log yard and they would actually but you find all over the ground there are all these really old chain remnants they used to have big masts up here and they would zip line the lumber into the bay right here and that's how they got the logs out of here and it's just incredible just like jagged cliffs and it's just an amazing town this is where they did a lot of huge huge redwood logging back in the day there's this like just big hole in the rock right here it's man it's just an incredible area but um anyways tomorrow we're gonna be going to anton's job site and we're gonna be doing some redwood logging which is uh incredible i've never done any logging before um just residential stuff so this is mendocino absolutely incredible place the weather's just perfect breezy so yeah we're here we're gonna get some rest we're gonna get up early and go check out this logging website logging some redwoods all right well we're at the logging site we just started we i came back up the hill to grab this jack we just started working we're dropping trees down there this is actually like a thinning project so they're selectively logging here they're not just clear cutting they're taking some of the big trees some of the little ones some of the medium ones and leaving some big ones and some small ones and some medium ones. I probably won't talk too much in this video because I'm still trying to sort of get my head around the uh, work site and I need to sort of pay attention, but I'm going to bring the jack down and we're going to keep dropping trees and yeah, I'll get some shots here and there, but probably won't be talking much in this video, but I'll be filming a lot while I'm here. <laughs>
What's your plan with this one, Anton? I'm gonna put it right up there, almost at the top of the one we just cut between this little downed root wad and that bigger piss for a little stob off of it. So you're going between these trees? Or over here? Between the one that looks like a pitchfork out there. Yeah, okay. The bigger one over to the left at the top of the redwood that we just fell. Okay, we just did that one. Yeah. So usually I try to like walk everybody through what's going on, but uh, cutting trees is already dangerous enough and trying to film it and especially when you're in a new environment can be really stressful. So today I've really just been sort of paying attention and trying to figure out what I'm doing. I've never commercial logged before, so uh, just trying to make sure I'm staying in the right spots and making my cuts well and everything. I'm pretty out of my element. Yeah, not, not a whole lot to really talk about in this video. You know, we're, we're just cutting these trees to millable lengths and then they yard them up the hill later. Um, it's all white fur. And redwoods so far is what we've been cutting. These redwoods are huge. They're only like 80 years old and they're just gigantic. This town is just like paradise. It's just amazing. It's, it's nice and sunny, but it's not that hot. We're in the shade. This job site's super cool. Anton's incredibly knowledgeable. So I'm still trying to get used to like bucking these big logs and stuff. So yeah, like I said, not, not a whole lot of, a lot of talking um, in this video. I'm really trying to pay attention and learn, I'm trying to talk through everything all the time. It's it's really hard. It makes doing tree work a lot trickier when you're trying to <laughs> explain the whole thing. So sometimes I just got to pay attention, you know, just to be safe. So probably just film a little more uh, felling and maybe wrap this up. doing logging in Oregon you know they're cutting everything whereas here they're leaving a lot of trees and also it's a little different they have to really pay attention to where the trees are laying because the redwoods really brittle it's easy to break the logs you're saying logging in Washington and Oregon with fur you more can drop them where it's convenient because they're harder you might lay the tree across the hill versus getting it up the hill if you're having to deal with leaving all these trees and work in between them, it's a lot of difference. Because it's a thinning if you're job. And all of them, you have a choice of laying it across the hill, so you're walking across the hill flat on the log instead of working up and down the hill all day. It's really hard to do physically. Yeah. So it's interesting. So the, the logging sites, a lot of them are quite a bit different. Sometimes you're logging a whole hillside. This is a thinning job, so it's selective logging, but also the, the, the trees play a big factor. You can't just drop them with these redwoods wherever it's convenient. You have to try to lay them down gently so you don't break all the logs. But it's kind of neat to see that you know the logging styles are quite different, even regionally, even a relatively close region like Oregon and Washington. So this is Anton here, Anton Slafer. Hey, Anton, can you just explain what this job site is, kind of, just what, what we're doing out here? This is just a uh, an industrial thin thinning job. We're just... Uh, taking a bunch of the oversized and taking it down to what the stocking that you see here is. How big is this project? It's uh, approximately 500 acres, 530 acres, something like that. And how long you been working on it? Um, we started in September of last season and stopped in October because of the rain and we started up again in April. So okay. we've been here since April this season. What is it now? It's July. Yeah. So pouring right through it. So this is like selective logging. So you're just this taking some of the trees. Selective and... tractor logging, yeah. We normally take the dead, dying, and diseased trees out, anything that has some defect, and some of the nicer trees to make it thin um, and give correct spacing for the smaller, younger growth. And how often will a property like this be logged? Um, it depends on what the harvest plan calls for, from harvest plan to harvest plan. This one's a little aggressive. Um, so it'll probably be about 20 years before they come back in here and log again. Okay, so just selectively, they'll, they'll take the trees that you're leaving Yeah. in 20 years? So um, redwood's different than any other species of tree. It only grows in two places that I know of in the world, California, up into really, really remote southern Oregon, I think has a few groves of redwood, but 
primarily between Santa Cruz and, and the Oregon border, and only maybe 15 miles inland from the coast. It's a very, very coastal tree. Also grows in Japan, and that's the only two places in the world that it grows. Characteristically, redwood is a very hardy wood. It doesn't rot really that easy. It's very uh, bug resistant, um, so it's great for porches and decks. It's good for interior stuff. It's also very brittle. It doesn't have the strength of a fir two by four, so you won't see very many houses built out of redwood two by fours are framed with redwood, but it's all, it's beautiful trim wood. The wood is very uh, red, pretty when it's um, sawed into lumber. It's very valuable because we're the only place in the world that really has it other than Japan. And it's a different species there. When you um, say Japan, is it, is, is it native or planted? It's native Japan? to Japan. They have, really? Um, it's on the same, what is it, latitude or longitude as California, so Japan's straight across, and uh, it's the only other place in the world that it grows. It has the same type of climate that it requires to grow. So these are the only two places that it grows. Amazing, so you're one of very few people in the world logging redwoods. Yeah, California loggers, yeah. And then not all California loggers, only California coastal loggers. There's a lot of the loggers only in Northern this. California. Exactly. Coastal yeah. Um, Santa Cruz has a pretty good stand, but the Sierra has none. Uh, they have cedar. It's got a lot of the same characteristics. It's it's a different type of tree and different type of wood altogether. But um, they're sequoias. Sequoias are very very brash and brittle. They don't make the best lumber, is what I've been told. I don't know. I don't know too much about sequoias. It's the other side of the state. It's, it's the other side of the state. And um, there's a reason that back in the day, in the 1800s and 1900s, <clears throat> when the loggers came from the east coast out here to cut. They started in, in, in the sequoias and they found the trees didn't hold together well when they were fell and uh, they, didn't make great, they didn't make great lumber either. So they came further to the west. They found the redwoods here were uh, much hardier. Uh, the strength was more and uh, they held together, made better lumber. So this is where they logged. What would you say to somebody like watching the video? They're like, they're cutting down all the redwood trees. We're gonna run out. What would you say to somebody like that? We call them red weeds. Um, and we can show later on if you'd like. Every time you cut one of these down, they sucker up. There's sucker clumps everywhere. These little trees here are all suckers and they just sucker up. Off of every old growth tree, there's an old growth stump, you'll find 15 or 20 trees. Over here's a great example. Last time in here they logged, they cut a tree right there and now there's 20 little redwoods growing out of that stump. And in 20 years, 25 years time, those will be harvestable trees. It's hard to kill a redwood tree. It's, it's near impossible to kill a redwood tree. Second growth, third growth, and, all, and so on. Old growth, different story. It's a, it's a different species of tree altogether, although it has the same characteristics or some of the same characteristics. Old growth redwood versus second growth or third growth redwood, it's a completely different animal. It acts different, smells different. Um, you know, it's got a lot of different characteristics. But they grow fast, huh? The second growth and third growth grow very, very fast. They're red, it's red weed. That's what we call it. I mean, they just grow like weeds. Every time you cut one down, five of them sprout off the stump. We also replant, but it reseeds itself so well off the stump suckers that a lot of times if you go in and you pre-commercial thin this redwood right, it'll grow back twice as fast. Like if you do that right, we'll come in and we'll take half of that group of trees out, limb up the rest, leave it alone for 20 years. Those trees will be 40, 50, 60, 80 feet tall. Um, 40 years time, they'll be as big as the tree that's behind it. Very cool. That's what they call a fairy ring. See the old growth stump in the center that's burnt. And these are all the suckers that grew off of cutting that tree down. And then these ones have suckers of their own. Yep. So yeah, you so cut one. they just keep going they, and going crazy. and going. Red weeds, right? So, but all these trees were harvested and or grew off this stump of that old growth tree that was harvested. Everywhere you look, even where we're cutting, up there there's an old growth stump, but there's some fresh stumps in that whole little patch that's a little brushy that whole little patch is all the suckers off of the stump and they'll eventually do this they'll turn into a fairy ring every one of these around here is a fairy ring around an old growth stump huh, incredible yeah then the old growth stump will rot out and there'll just be a big hole in there and people don't realize that there was once a stump there huh <laughs> like Wild. these trees didn't grow on their own they grew off of that stump huh these growth things yeah, these, these are massive. A lot of water. It really isn't that old. What is it, maybe 40 or something? Yep, maybe. Wild. Yeah, people think that big redwoods are all old growth redwoods. And I mean, look at the growth rings in them. That's, these are year to year to year to year. Yeah, they're huge. Yeah, they're not That's that old. Gorgeous. They're like 80 years old.
Va. So Gordy's scooting all the logs to the side so we can move around in here. So we're not dropping tree on top of tree on top of tree. How come you shave the bark? Um, I shave the bark over here because it's really crucial when you're jacking a tree to be able to see both sides. This thing's lo uh, larger than 36 in diameter with the bark on it, and I want to make sure I see my sides. Also, the cambium layer is really, really fibrous. If you get in here, you can really see it. I can make it like fur almost. And people are like, oh, you don't need to shave the bark on trees, blah, blah, blah. No, this right here, this stuff, this cambium layer, when you're cutting a long ways, the sides of each side of your kerf swell. It pulls from the top and the bottom, and it'll actually pinch your bar and your chain, the 3 8 chain. The kerf is not wide enough on the new 3 8 style chain. So I always shave the bark here. Because it's redwood. Because it's redwood. So um, you can run a new 3 8 chain in redwood until it's about half gone, maybe two thirds gone. And then after that, the chain gets narrow. You can see it on a chain. It's always wider at the top Man. out here, yeah. and then it, and it gets narrow at the base. So as you cut along, the kerf is big enough at the very beginning of the chain, but as you as you file your saw or you grind your chain down, the tooth actually gets narrow and you lose width on your kerf. Redwood is not good. So bigger the kerf, the better on redwood. Yes. <laughs> Why you snipe a stump and I didn't right there. What do you mean? What it first. What, cut it broke? Yeah. Pop it first. So if you would have if I would have sniped that stump and it would have got off, it would have saved out. That's me being lazy. But we're jacking the tree, backside, blind, look at the stump. It's pretty even wood all the way across. Yeah. It's pretty even. Nice job. I should have sniped that stump. If I'd have sniped that stump, it would have shot off and went right in the same hole and not broke. It's still a pretty tight shot. Really tight shot right between those trees. Super tight shot. Nice job. Yeah, so he was saying the redwood faller shaved bark. The bark actually swells. This you is actually really higher than the cut. Right yeah. It'll grab your chain, it'll grab your bar. And it does it from both sides. So when you're in there, the top of the log and the bottom of the log. Right, right. It's so weird how it sticks up like that. These old stumps out in the woods, if you see that marking, that's where the old timers would stick a springboard in it to get better footing. You springboard from time to time? Um, from time to time, not a lot, but, but you know, a few times a year, maybe five, six times a year. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it happens. It's when it's real steep. Steeper ground. I mean, like I'm standing where I can stand a saw on this and it's six feet tall stump on the, on the, on the low side, right. and on the high side, it's only six inches. That's the other thing that the guys from the East Coast, they always give us West Coast fallers a hard time for high stumps. But you can't make low stumps out here. Well, you right. can, but I mean, try to make a lower stump than that here. No, you can't get lower than not that. Gonna, even if with their, with, their, with their top cut, the way they do versus a Humboldt, you're only gonna gain maybe an inch or two on me here. And if I would have paid attention and was just cutting this tree where I could get around it, there's no way they're gonna beat me on the stump height. Either way, doesn't matter. Yeah, it's just different regionally. It's like this truck. Crazy. So it's oh, been sitting here. This truck's been all loaded for 10 minutes, just sitting here. When were these logs cut? Over on the 
Oh, a couple days ago, but if you back up a little bit right here, you can really see that one dripping. And they're always like that? I mean, some of them are heavier or wetter than others. You see, this one's dry. Oh, yeah. It's all wet on the ground. It's so crazy we, uh, how much water's in we this We cut one. this one. I just cut this one today. Yeah. And this one has been down for quite a while. Both and still dripping. See the, the riff see crack why. here? Yeah. That's what holds all that water. That's what holds the water. Okay. Nuts. See that one up there? Yeah, same deal. Crack in the center, same deal. And the solid ones aren't wet. Yeah. Well, it just That's depends cool. on the tree, I guess. got back to Anton's house. He lives like right by the beach. It's awesome. So hopefully you like that. Please consider liking and subscribing it today. That might end up being kind of a weird video. I, I don't even know if I got any of my self cutting. I, it was, it was a weird day for me. I was really out of my element. I really haven't done like any logging and uh, like it, Anton's the best cutter I've ever seen. I've never seen anybody cut that fast. So it was really quite the experience. So um, hopefully that video kind of came out, out. Okay. I'm going to be here this week. I'll, I'll do some more videos. Um, I'm gonna try to do some like tips and tricks while I'm with Anton because he's extremely knowledgeable. I mean, sixth generation logger and he's been doing it for like 20 years. So pretty, pretty cool, pretty special trip. Um, it's cool to be here with Gordy. I mean, this place is just, it's just stunning. Um, so anyways, yeah, we're just gonna get back at it. But, you know, I, got, I gotta say that it's kind of a surreal experience ever since I started traveling around and trying to work with a lot of people making a lot of videos. It's, it's really interesting that the more people that I work with, the more places I go, it's almost like the, the less confident I become, you know? I'm really realizing just how little I know um, because I've been working with so many really skilled people. And it's almost like a year ago, I was working at this tree service and you know I had sort of like climbed my way to the superintendent position and uh, I, I don't know I, I felt I guess I, like I was the man or something and now I, I work with so many talented people and I've been traveling and meeting so many people that now it's like every single person I work with I, I learn something new and I'm really realizing just how ignorant I actually am about tree work especially logging I just it's such a it's so you know loggers and arborists um, it's a different, it's a different industry. It's a, it's a different deal. Dropping tree after tree after tree, then dropping, you know, one tree that's between two houses or something. It's, it's, you're both cutting down a tree, but you know, it's just different. Anyways, this is just to say, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to say thanks for watching. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go now. I'll see you tomorrow. My tomorrow. Brian, not your tomorrow.